John chapter 6, verse 10. And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Luke chapter 22, verse 14 through 20 says, And when the hour was come, he sat down. And the twelve apostles with him, and he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat the pa this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and brake it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given to you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. <laughs> you know, a lot of the times we think uh, of Jesus as a supernatural person, uh, a miracle worker who can walk on water and turn water into wine, you know, a skilled handyman in his craft of carpentry, famous and even infamous too, you know, the king of kings. But both of these two verses that I opened with, which I read, have identical pieces of information that can easily be overlooked. What is that? Well, Jesus always gave thanks before he ate a meal. So what are you thankful for? Me, I'm thankful I'm still healthy. I'm thankful for the beautiful clouds in the sky, the clear blue sky and the sun. I'm thankful I'm strong, I'm smart. I'm thankful God has given me people in my life, friends and family. And I'm grateful, but I have to admit, you know, I don't always give thanks before a meal. I don't thank God for this nutritious meal, for allowing the rain to hit the earth and to grow the plants and to feed the animals, to allow everything to come together so that I can eat, so I can live, so I can learn more about God and serve Him more and speak His word and teach it. You know, a lot of times on social media, we're, we're always complaining about things that are wrong with the world and things that, you know, we want to see changed. But how often do you know we do we get on there and just give thanks to God for the things that we have, you know? There's there's many things, there's a long list of things that we could uh, complain about. But I would argue, you know, there's more things that we have to be thankful for, but we just don't do it. Now, I look back on the relationship that I was in, and I can complain about a lot of things, uh, this and that and the other, of uh, what she was doing things that were going wrong but the truth is ultimately I'm thankful you know I'm thankful um, for women in general I'm thankful for the relationship I had I'm thankful that God gave me the opportunity to share time with this person and I'm thankful that he still uses um, the experiences that I had in the past to shape me and mold me and make me a stronger person in the future you know I pray nothing but the best for her and uh, because it was a painful situation and as painful as it was, and as many things that I can complain about, you know, it always could have been worse. You know, a lot of men out there are in relationships that turn out even worse than I had it. You know, so part of my message today is not only to give thanks, but to remember that things could always be worse. You know, I don't, I don't have her anymore. That's bad, but you know what she doesn't have? She doesn't have Jesus Christ. And that's really bad. You know, that's the ultimate worst. Now I want to read a brief story out of the Bible to illustrate this point. Luke chapter 16 says, There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from this rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. 
The rich man, he also died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and said, and, and, and Lazarus in his bosom. Uh, Luke 16, verse 24 says, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy, in thy lifetime receiveth thou good things, and Lazarus evil things? But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which could pass from hence cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him, send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, and he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded that, thou, that though one rose from the dead. The word of the Lord. You see, Lazarus... He was a beggar, probably homeless, handicapped. The Bible says he had sores all over his body. You know, and I'm sure he thought he had it really bad in his lifetime. Definitely, he thought he had it worse than the rich man. But when it ended up happening to them in the end, who ended up having it worse in the end? Was it Lazarus or was it the rich man? You know? Us men here in the MGTOW community seems like we're the ones who are having it worse now. You know, we're the ones begging. You know, but we've said we're not begging anymore. You know, we're not begging these women for attention anymore. We're not begging society for uh, a pat on the back anymore. You know, I used to beg women. I used to beg my woman, please do the right thing. Stick with me. Love me. I beg of you. I beg of you. Feed me. Just like Lazarus did, right? And she was like, no. You know, she was like the rich man saying I can do whatever I want I'm rich you see gentlemen the wall of death is undefeated see this great pyramid behind me this pyramid is undefeated but one day God will defeat it the wall of death God is powerful more powerful than all of us you know Jesus said enter in at the straight gate for narrow is the way that leads to life, but broad is the way that leads to destru destruction, and few there be that find it. Jesus said, I, I say therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You know, maybe somebody is getting one over here on you in this lifetime, but the wall of death is undefeated. You know, one day they're going to die, we're all going to die, and we're going to meet our Creator, and we're going to be judged. And who's going to have it worse? The one person with, with Jesus Christ or the one person without Jesus Christ? Somebody may get the first laugh on you now in this lifetime. But they for sure won't get the last laugh on God because the wall of death is undefeated. There won't be any laughing on Judgment Day. You know, sometimes we can get caught up in things in this life. You know, the forest, uh, they say, is burning down, okay, in, in, in Brazil. Just like the beauty of a woman will fade away and burn away. You know, this life for all of us one day will fade and burn away. You know, the sun, it comes and it goes and it fades and it goes away. One day our bodies are going to turn to dust. There's a story uh, um, going around on the internet. You save the rainforest, you know, save Brazil, save, the, you know. But what does God say? He says the one, one world day, one day in the future, God's going to burn up this whole planet with fire. You know, that's, that's what is destiny here. So it's not this world that we need to save and the things in it. But it's our souls. It's our souls that are important that we care about. We need to give thanks that we still have time. That we still have breath in our lungs to tell others about Jesus Christ. Because only Christ can save your soul. You know, and Lazarus, he had his heart in the right place. You know, that's why when he died and the things of this world burned away, he was comforted and he was saved. You know, my prayer today 
is that the people in my past, especially the woman that I loved, you know, I pray that they all come to know Christ and accept him. Now, I've given up on her, but I pray Jesus Christ doesn't get up on her. You know, I pray the people in her life around her who still will listen to her or who's, who she'll still listen to, I pray that they encourage her to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray Jesus keeps knocking on her door, and I pray that one day she opens it up to him. Because I would be thankful to see her again. Maybe not in this corrupted world, but at least in the new world, in, in heaven, in the new earth, which is to come. You say, Sean, you're a saint, man. <laughs> Listen, sometimes God has to destroy things like the rainforest to rebuild them greener to rebuild them stronger. Even this great pyramid behind me, you can see it's damaged. It's not going to last forever. It's withstood a lot of, a lot of time, but it will not last forever. I say, Sean, well, I, I, don't, I don't have anything to be thankful for. You know, I'm a beggar. I'm struggling just for crumbs. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, um, sales people over here around the pyramid selling things begging for crumbs just the crumbs well if they have nothing else to be thankful for if you have nothing else to be thankful for you can always be thankful that you're saved that you know Jesus Christ so you won't have to beg anymore so one day you can be comforted like Lazarus was you know anyways <laughs> That's my short message here for you guys today, um, to give thanks before a meal, just like Jesus did, you know, because it seems to me every time I read the, in the Bible before Jesus ate, sat down to eat a meal, he always gave thanks to God, you know, and that, that's what he taught us to do. So um, that's what I'm going to try to do more often and uh, make, a, make a habit of it, just like Jesus taught us. Anyways, until next time, uh, peace, be, peace be with you, brothers. And uh, this is Sean Elvis out. Um, as usual, I'm going to give the Lord the last word, so I'm going to read uh, Psalms chapter 113. God bless you guys. Until next time. Peace. Psalms 113 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord, our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth Himself to behold the things that are in heaven and the things on earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that He may set him with the princes, even with the princes of His people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Amen.